Hi, and welcome to this latest conversation. I'm joined today by Danny Greaveson, and Danny is a certified executive performance coach. And today we're going to talk about navigating the end of lockdown with confidence. We're recording this in early May 2021, and the end of lockdown is in sight. And we're also going to talk a bit about the whole thing about dealing with anxiety as we return to sort of a more normal, whatever that means, way of, of working and living. So Danny, thank you so much for joining me for a round. I think this is our third conversation. So thank you so much for being up, up for that. And for people who haven't heard our conversations in the past or don't know you, tell us a bit about you and what you do. Well, thanks, Adam, so much. It's honestly a, a joy to be here. Jo joy to be here with you again. So, a little bit about what I do. So, I work in the field of leadership development, which is ginormous, and no one really knows what it means. But it's essentially enhancing people and teams in their in their performance. So, I call my company Lift This Life because I love raising up people in their performance, productivity, and hopefully a little bit of profitability. Now, that's fantastic. And what about your background? What what's your background in terms of how how do you now do what you do? Where have you come from? Ah, oh, so I, I started life making making Top Gear. So my first job while I was still at uni was was um, work experience on on Top Gear. So making making cups of tea, and they liked my cups of tea, so they took me on and um, and worked my way through through Top Gear. And um, then in the automotive sector, became UK marketing manager for Rolls Royce. Took a brief stint out of the automotive sector to work on the Olympic Games for Coca Cola. So London 2012. So really, truly saw England, well, the whole United Kingdom in all of its glory. I took the Olympic flame around, around the UK and Ireland with Coca-Cola, which was phenomenal. And then I was performance coaching in the automotive sector and then loved it so much that I wanted to take what I do out to a, a wider audience and, and thoroughly enjoy it to the point where I just want to um, reflect something back from yesterday. I was doing a team coaching session online and halfway through one of the chaps actually said, he said, Danny, can I just stop you a second? I said, of course. He said, can I ask you? where do you get your energy from? And, and I said, it's really simple. I love what I do. I love what I do. And I thought that was a really, really humble and interesting question actually to be asked. But genuinely, I love raising people up in their, in their performance and, and, and value really and, and, and their psychological strength um, it, comes, it comes down to. So that's how I, how I come, came to do what I do nowadays. Thanks for asking. That, that's a great insight. I hadn't thought about talking about it, but the whole thing about when we love what we do, when we work in the area of our passion, our, our talents, our, our gifts and abilities, that sort of gives us energy for, our, for what we do, certainly. Now, that, that's fantastic. Now, Dania, this conversation really came about through an article in which you were featured in the Evening Standard, which was about back to office anxiety as lockdown ends. And for anybody who wants to read that article, I'll link it below this video. But what are the challenges you think people are facing gen more generally as, as lockdown ends? Well, I think we could do, we, we could do hours on, on this, Adam. You know, it, it's such a big, big um, area about the, the challenges and, and anxieties that we're all facing in our own little way as we return to normality, whatever normality is. And a, a little acronym that, that I've heard actually is RIL. It's now an acronym in real life. It's now people are putting on emails in real life, RIL. But I think before we go into the actual challenges, what's interesting to note is, is some research from the University of Oxford shows that people that have had COVID, so anyone that's actually had COVID, are 44% more likely to experience neurological and mental health conditions as a result of having had mm. COVID. So put this on top of all the new guidelines that people have got to get used to working in the work. Am I wearing a mask? Shouldn't I wear a mask? How far should I be away from you? Can I make a coffee in the kitchen? Shall I not go into the kitchen? What's happening? All of these anxieties added on to anyone that's experienced COVID as in had it themselves, are 44% more likely to have a neurological or mental health concern anyway. So there are, there are massive challenges, as well as if we do go out, what are we bringing back home? And who have we got at home? Who is vulnerable around us? Do we have an elderly parent, perhaps? Do we have someone that is, is vulnerable in, in our home? So there are all of these thoughts and feelings around what, what does our individual normality look like and what are we comfortable with? That's really helpful. And I think 
for those people, and I, I've certainly had colleagues and people uh, I work with who've suffered mental health problems as a result of COVID, and, and I know all of us uh, have struggled with anxiety through this, and I know we both want to make clear that if people are you know, experiencing mental health problems, suffering severe anxiety, their first port of call should be their, their doctor and to, to seek professional help. So that's something we want to make clear in, in, in this conversation. But what are the positive things you think people can do to sort of come out of lockdown with confidence and some, some, some things they can put into place? Well, I think we've all established some very good habits working from home. I think on the whole, people have really celebrated that, that daily walk that we were allowed, certainly in the, in the first lockdown and, and, and taken it. So I think definitely exercise has got to be, got to be one, of the, one of the vital elements in, in helping us build, build a new, new routine, whatever exercise looks like. And like you just touched on with the mental health, I think we've all had that realization that the exercise is so important probably more so now for the mental health than the physical health. So I think exercise is absolutely, absolutely vital. But I think ask yourself, what, what routines have you built in this COVID time that have been good for you? Is it that you've read more books? Is it that you've connected more regularly with your friendships? Because we haven't been able to connect RIL in real life with people. So those, those connections that have been so vital to you through this time, really celebrate, celebrate those. So can you send somebody a little gift, a little card? You know, an act of kindness really does lift us, lift us too. But I think something that's really actually re very interesting to, to point, point out is that 12 months ago, well, March time, when, when the first lockdown down came, came aboard, millennials and Gen Z, so the younger, younger demographic, were actually really, really quite excited. They were the ones pushing for the work from home. Previous to the, pre pre previous to the lockdown, they wanted to work from home. But actually, as we've traveled through the lockdowns, that demographic, Gen Z and the millennials, have, have resisted it because on the whole, they're the ones that are living with their parents or indeed in a um, multi-occupancy home. So they're living with their friends and they're working from a bed. And that's quite an un uncomfortable place to, to work from, to actually focus and do your work, work from. However, at the opposite end of the spectrum, Gen X, so the an older demographic, they've actually quite enjoyed working from home because they've got, on the whole, got a bigger home so they can convert a room to a home, home office or a, or a study. So it's just interesting to note the change in people's mindsets and perspectives as we, as we work from home. But I think certainly the younger dem demographic are much more hungry to work to work back in a more collaborative way. I think you've, you've touched upon it because I think there are some positive things from lockdown we want to keep doing in the future. For me, being at home, working from home and doing court from home every day, I've been able to go on that 6am run every day. And where in the past I would have client conferences and clients would come from around the country to see me, the ability to have a conference by Teams or Zoom is something I want to keep in the future and it allows us to work far more efficiently. So there's some things that I, I, I want to keep hold of and change the way I work in the future. Uh, what, what positive things do you think, you've, you've hinted at them already, but what positive things do you think people can can hold on to from for the future from lockdown? I mean, Adam, you absolutely you know the, the no commute and you know not being stuck in traffic for for out i mean you you and i live in birmingham and it's just it's just horrendous driving around birmingham at, at at times but i think that's that's be, that's of course been a real real win win for people but I, conversely i was um working with a leader last night who actually loved his commute time because it, it allows him to decompress and come back in and differentiate from home to work and there's something very psychologically healthy about having that differentiation in in work and home life but coming back to the positives, so let's let's focus on, on some of the positives. Of course, we've all been able to operate at home, so a more relaxed way of working, you know, perhaps working in your slippers and able to make banana bread or carrot cake, you know, what or, or, or sourdough bread, you might you might have developed, you know, various various talents. But I also think it's it's taught us the importance of of being together and, and valuing that con connection. And one team session that I was asked to create, and I, I thought this was a fantastic idea from the, um, the company that I was working with, was around empathy. 
So building empathy amongst the team, because we all each have our own different setup at, at home, whether it's a dying cat, I've, I've, I've experienced that, or, or children or a new puppy, etc. Everyone is in a different way of working and it's quite hard to understand. Whereas when we encourage an environment of empathy, we build, grow and create a culture. And if you look to the leader of New Zealand, Jacinda Ardern, she's in fact built her country upon empathy. So I think we've all learned patience, I would, I would say, and indeed empathy for one another. I think that's really important because some, something we did as a, as a team of, of immigration barristers in chambers, we're all self-employed, but at the start of lockdown, setting up a WhatsApp group where we can just support each other and we can have those conversations, I think so important. And so many people have done that and that's something hopefully people can keep on going and use those, those skills of empathy and, and supporting each other, which perhaps we didn't do so much before lockdown because we were seeing each other face to face all the time, but now we, we can keep that, that going certainly. Are there, are there things, uh, other things you want to recommend to us, Danny, in terms of resources, tips, books, just things you'd like to leave us with? Yeah. Well, I think I, I think there are many, 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 many resources out there for all of us to to help, um, you know, strengthen ourselves in this time. You know, doing a strengths profile is, 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 a, is a great way, you know, understanding what your personal strengths are. But in terms of books, I would recommend one by Dr. David Hamilton, how your mind can heal your body so that's a really really helpful book in terms of the power of our mind and then another one if you are struggling with a little bit of of confidence and courage in the return to to work and the office another one that i would strongly recommend that i absolutely love is this one the confidence code written by um, Katty Kay and Claire Shipman. Katty Kay is a BBC journalist, Oxford, Oxford grad, she was at St Hilda's, and that's a really, really powerful book for developing and understanding your confidence. I think that that book, How Your Mind Can Heal Your Body, sounds fantastic, certainly, because because certainly one, one thing, you know, I, I've been thinking about a lot recently is how, you know, trauma and, and anxiety can impact us physically from that that bad back that a lot of people experience or, or that nagging headache or the you know that build-up of stress which we've all experienced you know during this time so that that's a fantastic resource and i've got it but excuse me leaning back right. as you just said that adam this one has sprung to mind and i know you'll love that that i the about your mind and breathing and the, mm. the power of breath um, certainly comes through in this one, as, as does um, cold showers uh, or cold baths, as Adam will know about, but the power of our breath, you know, getting really, really in tune with what's going on in, in our body and how that can really help calm us and bring us bring us back in. So, yeah, another book that I'll, I'd recommend as well. Absolutely. No, I'll link all those below the show notes. And for anyone who doesn't know, I'm a big fan of Wim Hof and do, do a Wim Hof breathing, usually during weekdays and just having that 10 minutes of breathing before I open my computer before I open my email is is, is so helpful. I, I know I, I may not be able to sell the cold showers, which I also recommend and have tons of benefits, but I, hopefully I can sell the sell the breathing. And just if you if you type into YouTube Wim Hof breathing, there's that those 10 minute free sessions where you can you can do that. And a really good practice to to do before the sort of start of the working day or even in the middle when you're sort of when you're zoomed out, when you're, you know, you're, you're tired, so, so important. Now, they, those are really helpful, Danny, and I'll, I'll link those in the notes. Just in terms of you, um, what can you offer people in terms of individuals and teams? And how do people get in touch with you if they'd like to, to work with you through some of these issues? Oh, thanks, Adam. So obviously through my website, Lift This Life, that really is the, the mission, the purpose of what I do. I really want to help raise people up in, in, in their value and, and indeed their strength. Um, so please do contact me through through my website. I do obviously team teamwork a lot online at the mo moment, but also with with people and then one one to one work too. That's fantastic. And is there anything else just before we close, Danny? Anything else you wanted to leave us with, or anything else you wanted to say? I think the the yes, I think this is really important to know, Adam, is that our communication in life is absolutely key you know you might fall out with your wife your husband because of your communication breakdown but but in this return to the office your communication with your management your leadership is absolutely vital what is it you need from the return to work have that open conversation with your boss because um jim clifton the ceo of gallup he actually says that your manager 
has more influence over your health than your doctor. Wow. Your manager has more influence over your health than your doctor. So I want to encourage people to actually communicate with their with their leaders at the moment about what they need from the return to work because they have the power to change it for you. And just so I've said finally a couple of times now, but just if there are people watching who are managers or business owners who have those people under them, what should they be doing to ensure people's well-being in this return from, from lockdown? Uh, very simple. Ask them what their needs are. Mm-hmm. Ask them. And that can come up in a one to, one-to-one or you could orchestrate a meeting, but some might be a bit confidential. Um, so it might be better in a one-to-one setting. No, that's that's fantastic, Danny. Thank you so much for your time, Danny. Thank you so much for your your recommendation. And, you know, thank you so much for encouraging everybody to take cold showers. I think that that's got to be the way. (laughs) No, that's brilliant, Danny. Thank you so much. It really helpful. I'm really glad you could join me again today. Delight to be with you, Adam. Thank you so much.